Last week, Liam from Golf Vlogs UK challenged me to a game of scratch if I use these golf clubs. Well, the stage is set, the clubs are ready, but how far did it go and where are we going to play? Let's find out and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and this is your first time watching my content, first of all, welcome to the channel. But second of all, please make sure you don't leave before you hit that subscribe button. On this channel, I bring you guys daily golf related content every single day that helps you raise your game, lower your handicap, and hopefully just gets you enjoying golf loads more. Now you may have noticed in the intro to this video, there's one big kind of elephant in the room as it were. These things. So a couple of weeks ago now, I did a video with Liam from Golf Vlogs UK and we compared a modern day tailor-made M5 driver with this 50 year old Lee Trevino wooden headed driver. And the video went down really well, but in that video, Liam offered me a challenge. I have to play him with these golf clubs around a Lynx golf course off scratch. But I need to work out how far these go. And also last week, I did you a video on how far my golf clubs actually go. I went through my entire bag, did a gap in session, and showed you guys just how far my clubs from sand wedge to driver actually go. So I thought, why don't I do it with these? Because not only is it gonna help you, because you can see just how far clubs have progressed in the last 50 years, because I'll compare them at the end. So I thought I'd do a video telling you just how far each and every one of these clubs goes. And then when I play Liam around Carnoustie, oh, sorry, did I give that away there? The match is gonna be played around Carnoustie Lynx. Playing with these things around such a prestigious golf course like that would be pretty amazing, or should I say is gonna be pretty amazing. But you see, here's my logic with this. You see, I'm thinking, yes, these irons aren't going to go as far as my current Mizuno JPX 919 Tours, and they're not going to be as forgiving because they are pretty tiny. But if I know how far they go, they should still be consistent and I should still be able to get a pretty decent gap in. So as long as I know how far they're going to go, yes, I'm going to give up some distance off the tee, albeit not that much. If you watch the video comparing the modern day driver to the 1970s driver, that was a pretty big shock. So looking down at these irons, I've moved all the way up to the nine iron now. And they are pretty weak lofted. This 9-iron almost looks like my kind of sand wedge that I have been using, but that doesn't matter. As long as I know how far they're gonna go, I can take him on, surely. Guys, hit those comments below. Who do you think is gonna win this match? Liam would usually get eight shots off me using his modern day equipment, but in this match around Carnoustie, or Carnasty, he gets nada, nothing, zero. So I'm finished there with the short ends and the wedges, and one thing that's really got me there is the gap in. You see, now when you order a brand new set of irons, there are tolerances. There are tolerances in loft, there are tolerances in lie angle. These things, obviously there's gonna be tolerances, and I think they're gonna be a lot more. The sand wedge looks so far upright, and the nine iron, I think, is pretty much the same loft as the pitching wedge. Not ideal. This eight iron looks tiny. Now I'm going to put this out there. If I can hit this eight iron like I just have done there, 150 yards, arrow straight with 7,000 spin, it doesn't stand a chance, surely, right? I mean, this thing might be the ultimate equaliser, but I'm not that good at putting it anyway. You see, being a player that likes bladed clubs anyway, don't get me wrong, these are a completely different level to the Mizunos that I'm using, as I've already said, but I should be able to get these things around Carnasty, right? Struck that amazing. And it's only just gone as far as the eight iron. Could I get these on a loft and line machine, maybe? One thing which is definitely gonna be a factor of this match is the gap in between these clubs. 
Pitching wedge and nine iron, pretty much exactly the same. Eight iron and seven iron, pretty much exactly the same. So I guess that goes to show just kind of what you do pay for now in terms of quality and consistency in lie angles and lofts. You see, I've just pulled the six iron out here and the lie angle looks about four degrees flatter than the rest of the set. And actually loft wise, loft wise, it doesn't look that dissimilar to a modern day six iron. Whereas the seven iron was like a nine iron. So I expect there to be a big gap here, maybe, possibly. Depends how I hit it, I guess. Another thing which I'm majorly gonna have to take into account is the lie angle of these clubs. Like I said, this six iron looks way flatter than the rest of the set. The sand wedge looks a lot more upright, so I may have to, have to play for a little bit of a fade with the six iron, play for a draw with the sand wedge, use those lofts to help me shape the shots instead of trying to fight against them. Not that Liam's gonna be shaping much on purpose anyway. Just make sure you check out my Instagram, James Robinson Golf, because I'm gonna check the lofts and lies on these clubs, compare them with my modern day Mizunos, and I'm gonna put them on Instagram for you to see, so make sure you go check that out. Not the most forgiving of six iron I've tested this year. Five iron looks more lofted than the six, I'm not gonna lie. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Absolutely hammered a five iron there and it's gone about 20 yards higher than the six iron and 10 yards shorter. This is going to be one interesting match up at Carnoustie. <laughs> That's going to be a mess. I can't wait to see these results. I cannot wait. That's a big difference in the wrong way. And so the last of the long irons, the Lee Trevino four iron. Who fancies that off a tight fairway at Carnoustie? I do. One thing I'm really loving about these irons are these old school grips. They're probably gonna fall apart in my hands on the back nine. Hopefully that's all that's gonna fall apart on the back nine, but they do have this lovely little ridge down the back for your fingers to sit in, just so you know the club face is gonna be nice and square. Towie. That is the irons done. Let's see how far I'm gonna be hitting it off the tee. Now we have a real interesting makeup for woods. A one wood, two wood, three wood, four wood. As opposed to in my bag, obviously a driver, a three wood and a hybrid. So there's no hybrid, but we do have a three wood, a two wood. Yeah, it goes on. Let's start. Let's start with the four wood. I'm gonna hit all of them off the fairway apart from the driver. Driver's gonna be teed up and then we're gonna compare the entire bag. You see, this is another one. I can't believe how good these look and I can't believe, I can't believe how good a condition they're in. Now that was absolutely nuked. But 240 yards with that. Okay, so I definitely think hitting fairways is gonna be a premium. So let's see what the three wood's like. Three wood looks pretty much exactly the same as the four wood. Not expecting a big difference here. Time to move on to the two wood. This could play a huge role off the fairway on those long par fours or short par fours. Even some of the par threes. Nailed it. Second shot into Carnoustie, clubhouse in the background, over the burn, run it up, make birdie for three to win the match against Liam. Oh, that's what I'm envisaging. Now, last but not least, let's go with the big dog. We have already done a video on this, but I'm gonna do it just for the comparisons. Let's see what I'm gonna be working with off the tee. At Carnoustie. I'm going to go with teeing it pretty high, I'm going to get my spine angle back, and to be honest, I'm just going to try and hit it hard. Well, we definitely take a load of those. I don't think distance is going to be the issue, you know. Which I think it's going to be when I mistrike it, where does it go? How far off line does it go? How far back is it? But that one was out of the meat. 258 yards, baby draw, straight down the middle of the fairway, first hole at Carnoustie, and Liam is officially himself. Liam, I know you're gonna be watching this video, mate. Better get practicing. 
even the mishap. Now we know how far these clubs go, it's time to have a look and it's time to compare them with the modern day clubs. So guys, just before we compare them, let's take a look at the clubs. Starting top end of the bag, driver 251 average, that is insane, I'm over the moon with that. 2 wood 238, 3 wood 222, 4 wood 215, look at these for gappings, that is amazing. Top end of the bag, I can't ask for any more than that gapping, absolutely cannot. Starts to get a little bit skewed when we get into the mid range of the bag, so 5 iron going 169. As you can see, they are all in distance order, so as we get to the mid range of the bag, the 6 iron on average goes 11 yards further than the 5 iron, which could prove to be an issue. 7 iron goes 155 on average, which I'm absolutely ecstatic about. I'm not, however, ecstatic about the gap I have between the 8 iron, which goes 152, only 3 yards less than the 7 iron, and the closest club to that is the pitching wedge at 127. The 9-iron doesn't go as far as the pitching wedge, which I did estimate, that's 122, and the sand wedge is an average at 110. So, as you can see there, there is a little bit of an issue with some of the clubs, with some quite big gaps that have been left, but I think I can deal with that, I think I can play with that. That does just go to show how nowadays we do get the lofts pretty much, I know there are tolerances, but we do get them near enough where they need to be. And with the older equipment, I know some of those clubs could have moved, but they are pretty new irons for how old they are. So they're probably just kind of not made to the same tolerances. Let's have a look how the full bag distances differ compared to my modern day clubs. So looking at the top of the page, no gap wedge or lob wedge in there, so they're obsolete. The sand wedge actually goes seven yards further with the old club than the new club. Pitching wedge a couple of yards shorter. Nine iron, 26 yards shorter, so a huge difference there. Eight iron jumps back up, just seven yards shorter. Seven iron, quite a lot shorter, again, 155 as opposed to 172 on average. Six iron, two yards longer than my modern day Mizuno six iron. But like I said, that did kind of look like a modern day Lofted six iron, maybe even a five iron, but Moving on, five iron, five iron goes, the old five iron goes 11 yards shorter than the six iron. This is where, this is where you need to know this on the golf course, or I need to know this on the golf course, because I could be getting caught out quite a lot. Basically, my five iron is my six iron, and my six iron is the five iron when I come to that, so I need to make a mental note of that. Four iron, 15 yards shorter, 190 as opposed to 120. Four wood as opposed to the hybrid, 15 yards shorter again. The old school three wood goes 222 as opposed to my modern day three wood at 249. I don't usually carry a two wood in the bag, but the two wood does go 238 for me. And the driver, as opposed to 272 on average, goes 251. So as you can see there, there are pretty big differences in distances for golf clubs in the space of 50 years. Not just for the distances, but for the consistency, for the playability and getting out there on the golf course and knowing how far these things should go. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed that. I've personally loved it. I've really enjoyed hitting these things and I cannot wait to go and play against Liam at Carnoustie off scratch. Guys, make sure you tune in for that. Go and check out Golf Vlogs UK if you haven't done already because he's a laugh a minute. Literally, I spent some time in America with him at the beginning of this year and my sides are still hurting. So if you do enjoy golf and you do enjoy a laugh, make sure you go check out Liam. Apart from that, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for myself. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this video and comment below who's going to win Carnoustie. Apart from that, as always, I'll see you tomorrow.